I'd love you to talk a bit about trust and inspiration and how the Spirit uses that. Yeah, trust is the, like the cornerstone of the awakening process and it's very similar to faith. It's not like that the mind has been faithful or faithless. It's more of taking a close look as what, where have I placed my faith? Where have I put my, my trust? And that starts to give a meaningful context for the awakening. Have I invested in, in false egoic beliefs and egoic thoughts? Or have I invested in the, the spirit, which is really the undoing of those false beliefs and false thoughts? So, in one sense, it seems like trust needs to go toward the spirit, towards the Great Awakening, and yet this has to play out in terms of symbols. Because when the mind's asleep and dreaming, all it knows is symbols. So this is the Holy Spirit's task, is to exchange self-concepts into greater and greater, more expansive self-concepts that approach true forgiveness. And this whole progression or movement is, of course, to the point of reaching a total release point where all illusions fall and seen, are seen as nothing. But the progression towards that is, you might say, that the spirit has to use what the mind believes in. Otherwise it would be, it would seem impossible to make those exchanges of those self-concepts. So, for example, uh, I had a counseling call this morning with a woman who had seemed to lose her health, her house, all of her possessions of 40 years, and went into homelessness and was on the verge again of, of going homeless and was very, very frightened. And so the, the whole conversation centered around seeing that actually things weren't being lost or taken away, but things were being devalued in the mind. Because the, the true prayer of the heart was for healing and for joy and happiness. And these stories of these circumstances and things that seemed to be taken away were just part of that devaluing that was occurring. And then the conversation switched over to having that switch of purpose, to have that little willingness to call upon God and say, how can I be truly helpful? How can I be a witness for you? How can I extend your love? Uh, which takes the mind in a whole new direction of away from the fear of uh, what have I lost and how will I live and how will I be provided for and turns the mind very softly towards how can I be of support, how can I be of help, what do I have to offer, what can I give. And so the conversation turned very quickly to, to that that nothing was happening by accident, and it was just a, a grand opportunity for, for turning the mind in a new direction, into being truly helpful. So inspiration is, is how can I serve then? Yeah. How can I serve? What would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me say? To whom? You know, just in that open, state of mind where you want to serve and be of help to everything and to everyone without exception, but also a willingness to be shown, to not presume that the mind already knows how to be helpful, but to be very open.